Good morning, everyone. Um, this is a very special day um, in our community, and I am very pleased to be able to announce to you why this is a special day. My name is Tom Maltzby. I'm President and CEO of United Way of the Greater Dayton Area, and I'm pleased to announce that United Way of the Greater Dayton Area and the Hall Hunger Initiative have formed a strategic partnership to enhance resources to combat food insecurity in the Greater Dayton Area. This is a high priority for United Way. The Hall Hunger Initiative will become a collaborative partnership working through United Way's community impact team and with other services and programs that are aligned to combat hunger. We have been working with Rick Carney on behalf of Tony Hall and HHI for several weeks. We are in agreement that United Way is the best way to facilitate this initiative in our community. The partnership will entail providing infrastructure for Hall Hunger Initiative, including office space, staffing, and financial management. United Way will be the recipient of their grants. HHI will procure funding, has procured funding for three years with the potential for additional support um, as the program develops. While HHI is very interested in bringing more food resources to the area, to address food, uh, food insecurity, they are equally as interested in working collaboratively with a broader community to reduce and eventually eliminate food insecurity. To that extent, the Hall Hunger Initiative will align very well with our ongoing initiatives. Their mission is to, is commensurate with United Way's goal to expand and grow strategic partnerships to solve community problems. It's official, and we are proud to welcome Hall Hunger Initiative to our work and to the greater Dayton area. Now I have the pleasure of introducing the man behind the initiative. And uh, he is no stranger to any of us in this room, but I'm going to take a moment, if you don't mind, to introduce him. Tony Hall was born in January 16, 1942. He graduated from Fairmont High School in Kettering in 1960. He received a bachelor's degree from Denison University in Greenville, Ohio in 1964. While in college, he was named Little All-American Football Tailback and, Ohio, and the Ohio's conference most valuable player. After college, he served as a Peace Corps volunteer in Thailand teaching English, an experience that contributed to his strong interest in world hunger. Hall and his wife, Janet Sue Dick, were married in 1973. They had two children, Jill Hall Smith and Matthew Hall. Their son Matt died in 1996 at age 15 of leukemia. Tony served in the House of Representatives for more than 20 years, representing the state of Ohio as a Democrat. He served in Congress for 24 years longer than any previous U.S. representative representing Dayton's 3rd District. During his tenure in Congress, Tony concentrated on seeking to alleviate world hunger. He made frequent trips to more than 100 countries as Sierra Leone, Ethiopia, Sudan, and North Korea where hunger was widespread. He was chairman of the Select Committee on Hunger from 1989 to 1993. When the committee was abolished, Tony fasted for 22 days in protest. He was founder of the Congressional Friends of Human Rights Monitors and the Congressional Hunger Center. Tony's term on the Foreign Affairs and Small Business Committee, he also served on the Foreign Affairs and Small Business Committee before being appointed to the House, Committee, the House Rules Committee in 1981. Tony served as United States Ambassador to the United Nations Agency for Food and Agriculture and as Chief of the United States Mission to the UN Agencies in Rome, which includes the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, World Food Program, and the International Fund for Agriculture Development. Congressman Hall's confirmation to the Post was held up for several months. 
but he was confirmed and sworn to the post in September of 2002 by U.S. Secretary of State Colin Powell and served until 2006. Subsequently, he worked on a Middle East Peace Initiative in collaboration with the Center for the Study of the Presidency. When Tony became a believer in Jesus Christ, it changed his life. With Tom Price, Tony wrote, Changing the Face of Hunger, one man's story of how liberals, conservatives, Democrats, Republicans, and people of faith are joining forces to help the hungry, the poor, and the oppressed. And this was in 2007. In March of 2007, Tony announced he was committed to fostering a Middle East peace initiative by working with the Center for the Study of the Presidency and religious leaders of the Holy Land, principally among Muslims, Christians, and Jews in the Middle East. Under a $1 million grant from U.S. Secretary of State, then Condoleezza Rice, the U.S. Agency for International Development, to be applied to both economic and faith-based efforts, Tony was to work with religious leaders to help prepare the way for peace in the Middle East. He received no salary for this work. Now Tony so serves as the Director Emeritus for the Alliance to End Hunger. Hall also serves on the Board of Advisors of Opportunity International, uh, a charity that seeks to end poverty through microcredit lending to entrepreneurs. His great work continues as the Hall Hunger Initiative strategically aligns with the United Way of the Greater Dayton Area to continue this great work where his enduring career began. So in closing, it gives me great pleasure to present to you Congressman, Ambassador, and Servant Tony Patrick Hall. It's a long introduction. <laughs> was a wonderful introduction, um, a lot longer than probably what I'm going to say here in the next couple of minutes, but uh, thank you so much. Last year, uh, the Dayton Daily News reported uh, the findings of a national survey that Dayton was the fourth hungriest city in the country. To further look into that, there actually is no city in Ohio that uh, that was in the top 25. Other reliable data and research shows that the Dayton region is either seventh or the ninth hungriest in the country. So, in either case, Dayton um, being in the top 10 hungriest cities in America, you know, it's just simply unacceptable. I made the commitment then to collaborate with the many outstanding hunger organizations along with the local government and the private sector in our community to fight this crisis in, in my hometown, your hometown. And I could not be more pleased and, and thankful to announce today the official opening of the Hall Hunger Initiative that is now operating at the United Way of the Great Dayton area. It's exciting for me to be with United Way. I, you know, I've been a fan of them for many, many years. And uh, it's, uh, it's important that we are with them. Uh, they have served the community for so many years. And uh, they, we, we fit right with them and what they're trying to do. Also, hearing this call of service uh, that uh, I'm so involved with, with was the Jack and Sally Eichelberger Foundation of the Dayton Foundation, who provided uh, the initial funds to create the Hall Hunger Initiative. And I want to thank the trustees, uh, David Greer, uh, Neil Zimmers, and Gary Froelich for honoring Jack and Sally's memory by caring so deeply for the hungry of our community. And uh, one of the trustees is here, Gary Froelich. I want Gary to come up here and say a few words. He's 
not only a friend uh, and uh, a well-known attorney and uh, a community leader, but he's, he's the trustee of the Eichelberger Foundation. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. Um, I'm here on behalf of the Eichelberger Foundation that is formed by Jack and Sally Eichelberger, who are unfortunately no longer with us, but they were friends of Tony, and Tony knew them. And I'm here on behalf of the Board of Trustees, Dave Greer and Nick Zimmers, to be a part of this beginning of a initiative to solve a terrible, terrible situation that we have in our community. And I use the term beginning in the sense that we look at this as an opportunity to fund something that will leverage or grow. And if we want this to grow, we couldn't find a better person in the world that I can think of with the with the credentials and the proven commitment to address this problem because I think he will be a leader, a mentor for everybody, and will call attention to the problem. And if we had an opportunity to invest in something, I think this is an investment in a solution. And Tony, we look forward to you and working with the United Way, and we're glad to be a part of it. Thank you for coming back to your hometown and being a good neighbor. And as you know, we were good neighbors for many years. Absolutely. Thank you. Great. As you can see, the, uh, we're having this announcement here at one of the finest hunger fighting organizations in Dayton, uh, the Good Neighbor House and uh, to talk a little bit about them and what they're doing. I want to bring up uh, Frank Perez, who is the chairman, uh, a man who's been a real community leader. Uh, before this, he was he headed the, the, the Kettering Hospital, and I'm so glad to see that uh, he didn't retire, that he's working uh, to really, really help people in this community. Frank, come up and say a few words. It is a great honor for us to be hosting this tremendous moment in the history of Dayton in terms of uh, combating, fighting, alleviating that which our Lord said, as you have done unto our, one of these little ones, you have done unto me. When he was asked, when did we feed you? He said, well, let me tell you. As you have done unto one of these little ones, you have done unto me. You know, hunger knows no religion, no political party, no race. And we see that coming through our doors every day of the week. When Tony said he wanted to engage in, in, in this initiative in his hometown a couple of months ago, we said, here, here, we have partnered with the United Way, as a United Way partner agency for, for years, and a lot of what goes on here is the support that so many have given. So we are honored, uh, we are uh, behind this initiative with every ounce of energy in our bodies because we believe that we are doing the master's work when the Good Neighbor House uh, engages in advancing, in promoting a healthier lifestyle and it starts with the most fundamental hunger. So thank you, um, Tony, um, Gary, for uh, embracing this journey and allow, allowing us to be a part of it as well. Blessings to you.
as you can see, the, the good neighbor house is really serves the neighborhood and the Tate community very, very well. And um, I'm very proud to associate with them. And, and of course, I'm so proud to associate with so many of you that are in the room here. Um, in just a moment, you will hear from Marcia Ehlers, who is, she's fighting hunger on the front lines every day about what this very organization is facing in order to accomplish their mission. Uh, the Dayton Food Bank says there are over 125,000 people in our community who are food insecure, and census data shows that nearly one in five uh, are living in poverty. The task for all of us is to identify who those hungry people are and where are they then how do we provide the services they so desperately need? The Good Neighbor House and the 103 other food pantry and soup kitchens, they have a tough job at hand. And um, so let's hear from uh, Marcia. Good morning. Thank you for being here. It's an honor to be here. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about our numbers and what we've seen here. We are in this location here on East 1st Street. It will be three years in April. The neighbor house has been in existence having a pantry for over 22 years. Since that time, we've modified, tweaked, done some other programs, but what's kind of remained consistent is the need in our community and people coming to us for hunger. So what we've noticed since being down here and reopening our doors after remodeling this building in April of 2013 is we're seeing a lot of new faces. We're seeing a lot of people who may be here just one time. We do have some of our um, guests who come through here who may have been served in the other building. Um, I had one gentleman this morning who said, I've known you since you were all on Patterson Road. Um, and so it's, it's great to see, A, that people are hearing about us, people are coming to us who have a need. Um, our numbers, and just to show you a few of the number, how we're the need is coming along for our food pantry. In 2015, we served uh, 27,562 individuals in our food pantry. In 2014, it was 17,150. So we have a 61% increase in the individuals coming through, 50% increase in the families being served. And the amount of food items that we have been able to give out is up 53%. And I'll provide you with these statistics so you have these um, as well. It used to be that we'd be able to look out in our lobby and at the beginning of the month, we'd have a spattering of people. It wouldn't be extremely crowded, but since we've been down here, it seems to me like you can't really gauge where we are with that. So it, middle to the end of the month, historically was extremely busy. There's some first weeks of the month now where some of my seasoned volunteers will say, is it the end of the month again? <laughs> so we are we are extremely busy, mostly at all times. And, and the food pantry again is is where a lot of people are coming in who just they may need us to just help bridge that gap for them for one or two times, or it may be something that we can help connect them with other resources. But they continue to come to us until they kind of are able to get back on their feet again. The family unit is also changing, and what we've seen here in staff that's been here for eight years or so has seen the family unit changing, where it's not just a maybe a mother and a father and some children. We have neighbors taking on neighbors. We have eight, nine, ten people in a family unit, and all of them are in desperate need of food services. And coming here, we're hearing their stories and listening to what they have to say. One of the things that we've been tasked with, and again, partnering with United Way as long as we have, and we're so blessed to have them, support us, as well as the Dayton Area Food Bank, but having, we have to step up and we have to work other relationships in order to keep our food pantry shelves filled. Um, you know, if we give a family of one 26 items, but we're out of four of them, if they're depending on us to fill that gap, you know, we need to step forward and say we're going to have to reach out and, and all work together in making sure those shelves are full. One of the things since coming down here to this building we've been able to do is we now have what they call a choice pantry system. And it's been absolutely fantastic because number one, you get to one-on-one -on -one with the client or guest as you're in there shopping with them and they're picking out the grocery items. So you're able to talk with them about A, their family, why are they here, um, 
we're able to also help them select items that we have choice, uh, different kinds of cereal, different kinds of vegetables, that type of thing. We're able to work with them and have them select um, and have a little more independence with choosing the items that they want to bring home and give to their families. So that's been a wonderful blessing. And another thing that we've been able to do through an amazing uh, team of volunteers is we've been able to change our hours around. So Good Neighbor House historically was Monday through Friday, Monday through Friday, and now we are able to open up on Saturday. So we have two Saturdays during the month that we're open, which enables us to have families who were maybe not able to get down here during the week because of maybe daycare situations, uh, because of employment situations, but now we're able to reach out to a whole new um, untapped unit of people who really, really need our services here. So we're very blessed to be in this new location and to be here. Um, Michelle Schaefer has been a volunteer here at Good Neighbor House for a little bit over two months. And Michelle actually came to us as a client. And in, I was able to do her intake, which is absolutely wonderful, because I think if you talk to Michelle for more than two seconds, you just start smiling, because that's just how she is. And even in intake, um, I was like, this would make the perfect volunteer. So Michelle is actually down here working with um, one of our social service agencies, doing some volunteer hours here. And um, she's down here almost as much as staff is, even though she doesn't have to work that many hours. But she loves it down here, and we love having her, and we're blessed to have her. But come on up, Michelle. So I just wanted to ask you a few questions, and I know your story, okay. um, but I just wanted to maybe say, first of all, um, you are sort of the new face of um, guests we might see coming through Good Neighbor House, in that, just tell us a little bit about your family. You and your husband employed, everything's moving along, you have children, and what happens? Um, I got sick um, through the job that, I'm, that I do, I do hair and nails. And um, the fumes and stuff had got to my lungs, and you know I had to go to the doctor, and so I couldn't work and do the job that I was doing for 26 years. So then I come here, and Marcia totally just helped me and made me feel so comfortable. Like everybody here is amazing. And when she told me that she wanted me to come and work, I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. You know, and I knew it was God because I know that. That's what we're supposed to do is help people. And I do appreciate you guys so much. But what, one of the things, too, I know that we had talked about is when you first decided, because you've not been to another food pantry before, no. have you? Never mm -hmm. been to a food pantry. Mm -hmm. And husband also had some health issues as well, yes. correct? Yes, he did. And so what was it that aha moment, I need to come down, I need to somehow get some help, what happened? What, what led you to, I mean, what was that day or what was that time where you said I need to maybe reach out? Um, well, I was totally just looking in the cupboard and I was just like, we have to do something. So I have three children and um, I, was in, I was kind of embarrassed to come down, but everybody made me feel so comfortable that I didn't feel ashamed anymore. And I was just, I was just amazed on how, how you guys can... resource for you and let me tell you about them and kind of just to talk a little bit about that have you had anybody approach you outside of the neighbor house that, or maybe some of the spirit here that yeah you feel um i have my cousin and she was having difficulties with her job she's going to school for like everything and she's just an amazing person and she worked for um sinclair and she lost that job because um, I guess they didn't have any more funds to take care of the job that she was doing. And so she has been off work for probably two years now. And she, I told her about the place and I just said that you guys were amazing and that they would not make you feel ashamed, you know, and would help you and just build up your confidence. Like they totally make me feel so wonderful. <laughs> I appreciate it so much. So, well, I appreciate this, and thank you very much. And as I said, I do have some statistical information available, and Michelle will be available to, um, to talk to outside of the podium. But again, thank you. This is such a blessing. Um, Good Neighbor House is so 
lucky to be involved in the organizations and the, um, the people in the community who step forward. And, and I can't ever take a podium without saying I just want to thank volunteers, not just the volunteers at the neighbor house, but the volunteers throughout our community, because the volunteers run this place. I have the best job in the world in that if I have a bad day, I get free hugs. I get the biggest bonuses in uh, being able to talk to my volunteers, and so just really happy to, to be involved in this organization. Again, thank you for all your support. Thank you. Well, that's uh, the end of the formal part, and uh, we are very open to questions. Fire away. Can, can you just, I'm, I'm sorry, can you just kind of discuss the main, if you had to summarize the main, uh, you know, uh, uh, components of this initiative, like if you had to just summarize the top three or top five elements, can you do that? I would say this Hall Hunger Initiative with um, United Way is really to help collaborate, bring people together, educate, advocate on behalf of, of uh, hungry people. Uh, you, you heard Michelle's message. Uh, Michelle was embarrassed. She was embarrassed to admit that she didn't have any food. It's people that are hungry in Montgomery County, this is it's a hidden hunger. Mm -hmm. It's a hunger in which um, you don't see people lying around on the street like you do in Calcutta. Uh, it's, it's a hunger in which we're talking, the people that are hungry are, are mostly women and children and senior citizens. And these are not people, they're embarrassed to be in the situation that they're in. And they're not coming, they're not knocking on anybody's door and saying, feed me, feed me. What's happening is, they are doing everything they can. They're working. They are paying their utility bill. They're paying their rent bill. They're paying the, uh, their daycare bill. And if anything happens, they get sick. One thing happens to them. Uh, and they can't, if their car breaks down or something, they find themselves at the end of the month, two or three days, coming to a food pantry like they do at neighbor house. What we're here to do is to help collaborate these great organizations that we have here to bring attention to this issue, to pound this issue home. This issue of hunger has got to be pounded home. We've got to educate. We've got to advocate for this. Why is hunger an important issue? It's a moral issue. It's the right thing to do. It's a spiritual issue from the standpoint of faith whatever faith that you have, uh, you can't escape the fact that uh, if whatever your faith is, whether you're Jewish or whether you're Christian or even Muslim, in the Quran, in the Old Testament, New Testament, it's, it's, it's the second most talked about issue. It's an economic issue. It costs $169 billion a year to pay for hunger. But the other thing that most people forget, it's a security issue. If people are hungry and are not working, they are very susceptible to be, um, you know, to be really pushed to be hired as lobbyists, or not, I'm sorry, not lobbyists, terrorists. And I, I remember lobbyists, that's a, that's a good thing. <laughs> Couldn't be about the same. <laughs> <laughs> The important thing I'm saying here is that it is really a security issue. I remember speaking to a man in Pakistan. I said, why do you send your son to the Madras school that teaches hate about the United States? He said, I send my son to the Madras school because they feed him. I can't afford feed him. They give him a job. I can't give him a job. They clothe him. They educate him. This is what we're up against. You want to fight terrorism? You got to fight poverty. You got to fight hunger. A lot of a lot of terrorists are recruited right here in the United States, but overseas as well. So what are we doing? 
while we're here to build a wonderful team among good people. We're here because we lost 40,000 wonderful jobs here in the Dayton area. We're here because people are hurting. We're here because hunger is hidden. We got to bring it out. We saw what the Good Neighbor House did in one year. In one year, they increased, they went from, they went, had a 61% increase in the people asking for food. And we're here to pound this <coughs> issue home. Not to build a giant bureaucracy. We're here to address that issue. It took me a heck of a long time to answer your question. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think you covered it, Tony. You know, th this partnership is important for exactly what Tony said. He's a huge advocate. Not only, you know, this is his home, but he's also a huge advocate around the world and around the country. And uh, we are truly fortunate and blessed to have an individual of his caliber and of his character, you know, working in our community, coming back home to work in our community to make sure that people are, are not food insecure. So uh, I think you touched on it. it it's very important. Tony brings a lot of passion. You know, he, he's not looking for a job. You know, he brings a lot of passion and a, and a lot of uh, care and concern about people, um, as do we at United Way. And so we, working together, you know, along with this very trusted advisor, uh, Rick Carney, you know, who does all of the groundwork for Tony here. But Tony brings a lot of, of leverage. Uh, we have resources uh, that we know we will bring. He also brings a spirit of collaboration. You know, that they don't want to come in and, and, and take over. They want to come in and be part of what we're doing. So these things are very important uh, in terms of having this very wonderful uh, and very substantial asset uh, to address uh, one of the top priorities and the top challenges in the uh, Greater Dayton area. Good. Thank you very much. We can answer individual questions if you have. Thank you. Oh, that's good. That's way better than <laughs>